Okay, well, good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm very pleased to be joined today by colleagues from the Department of Justice and the Environmental Protection Agency, including, I'm happy to say, EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler, uh, Assistant Attorney General Jeff Clark, and EPA Admi Assistant Administrator Susan Parker Bodine. And the reason we're all here is to announce an important matter that involves the protection of our environment. I'm going to turn the podium over to Administrator Wheeler to make that announcement before I then offer a few brief comments myself after him. But before we proceed, I wanted to express my profound appreciation for Administrator Wheeler's leadership, both in regard to this matter and in the administration's broader environmental policy efforts. He and I have worked together on tough environmental policy issues since the mid-2000s when he served as Chief Counsel of the U.S. Senate Committee on the Environment and Public Works, and I served as General Counsel at OMB. And one thing I know is that his dedication to serving the American people and his faithful interpretation of the nation's environmental laws have been hallmarks of his service to our country. And those are certainly demonstrated by what he's about to tell you. So, Administrator Wheeler, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for the introduction. And it truly is a partnership between Department of Justice and EPA, not just on today's announcement, but overall. We have a winning record in the courts, and that's because of the close cooperation we've had with, with your attorneys and your work, and Jeff as well. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody for being here today. I'm very grateful for the tremendous support from Deputy Attorney General Rosen, Assistant Attorney General Jeff Clark, and his counsel, Michael Bushbacher, as well as DOJ staff who have worked well with EPA staff on this challenging issue. Let me recognize a few of the EPA staff by name. From our Office of Air, Paul DeCracker, Joe Ball, and Dan Cullen. And from our Enforcement Office, Brianna Idings, George Orahowski, Kelly Ortega, and Evan Bessler. These staff worked tirelessly to discover Daimler's cheating. Today's settlement with Daimler sends a clear and strong message to manufacturers and consumers alike. The Trump administration will vigorously enforce our nation's laws designed to protect the environment and public health. EPA's vehicle emission standards prevent millions of tons of pollution from being emitted into the air we breathe, protecting public health and helping achieve national air quality standards. Every automaker must meet the same standards including vehicles imported from other countries. When companies break the law, America depends on EPA to step in and enforce the law to help ensure that automakers compete on a level and fair playing field. Under the Clean Air Act, a vehicle manufacturer must apply for a certificate of conformity before it can sell a vehicle in the U.S. This certificate proves to EPA that their vehicles and engines comply with EPA vehicle emission standards. These certificates must disclose related components, including software, so EPA can determine whether or not they operate as defeat devices. Daimler did not disclose all of their software, and when the EPA engineers tested Daimler's vehicles, they discovered that Daimler vehicles included devices that were designed to defeat emission controls. EPA's talented and dedicated staff at the National Vehicle and Fuel Emissions Laboratory in Ann Arbor were able to detect and expose these defeat devices through rigorous testing of Daimler's vehicles. EPA found that the vehicles contained hidden software. That software could detect whether a vehicle was driving under the test conditions, in which case the software made sure that all emission controls were operating properly, or road conditions, in which the software intentionally reduced its emission controls, increased emissions of nitrogen oxides from the vehicles, and threatened public health as a result. It is a monumental challenge to identify hidden defeat devices in vehicle software, which can contain millions of lines of code. We are very proud, I am very proud, of our talented and dedicated staff that was able to detect and expose these defeat devices. Of course, this is not the first time that a vehicle manufacturer has willfully installed hidden software that defeats required emission controls. 
Volkswagen sold over 590,000 vehicles in the U.S. that contained defeat devices. Fiat Chrysler sold over 100,000 vehicles in the United States that contained defeat devices. The case we are settling today involves more than 250,000 Mercedes-Benz and Freightliner diesel vans and passenger cars with defeat devices that Daimler sold in the U.S. between 2009 and 2016. Deputy Attorney General Rosen will describe the settlement in detail, but let me point out that Daimler will pay a civil penalty of $875 million in total. This is the second largest civil penalty in the history of the Clean Air Act. On a per vehicle basis, this penalty is larger than both the 2017 VW penalty and the 2019 Fiat Chrysler penalty. Some in the press and elsewhere like to perpetuate a myth that this administration is not aggressive with polluters. Nothing could be further from the truth. This settlement continues our record of success in the Trump administration with taking companies that don't play by the rules, taking on cheaters, and taking on illegal imports. In fact, to date, we have collected more in civil penalties for violations of environmental laws in the Trump administration than the EPA collected in the first four years of the previous administration. And that is true without counting today's settlement, which has not yet been entered by the court, or even the 2017 VW settlement. I know a lot of people in the press like to point saying that we weren't responsible for the 2017 VW settlement, but we spent a lot of time and effort during this administration to bring that case to fruition. Even if you discount both that case and this case, we still have more civil penalties during this administration than the first term of the Obama-Biden administration. The same is true for criminal fines and restitution. Our numbers are higher than the previous administration. EPA's cases have resulted in more in criminal fines and restitution in the Trump administration than the first four years of the previous administration. The message that we are sending today is clear. We will enforce the law. We will protect the environment and public health. And if you try to cheat the system, and mislead the public, you will be caught. Those that violate public trust in pursuit of profits will forfeit both. Thank you, and I will now turn it back over to Deputy Attorney General Jeff Rosen. Thank you. Well, thank you, Administrator Wheeler. I want to emphasize the strong commitment that both the Department of Justice and the Environmental Protection Agency have made to the enforcement of our pollution laws, including the Clean Air Act. So let me briefly describe the ways, the key ways that this settlement will fulfill that commitment as it includes several different forms of relief. First, as Administrator Wheeler just mentioned, Daimler will pay a civil penalty totaling 875 million. And that equates to about a $3,500 penalty for each vehicle that was sold in the U.S. And that is one of the, the two largest uh, under the Clean Air Act. My understanding is it's actually the largest for a mobile emissions violation under the Act on a per vehicle basis. Second, Daimler will fix each of the affected vehicles without any cost to the consumer. That means recalling the vehicles and bringing them into compliance with Clean Air Act emission standards. We estimate that the cost to Daimler to perform these recalls is close to $400 million. Third, Daimler will mitigate the damage this scheme did to our nation's air quality by replacing, at its own expense, no less than 15 old locomotive engines with new low nitrogen oxide emitting engines that should offset the illegal emissions from the vehicles. Fourth, Daimler and Mercedes-Benz USA will strengthen their internal corporate compliance procedures to prevent future violations of the Clean Air Act. They must hire a third party to review their compliance measures on a regular basis going forward to ensure they are strong enough. Taking all these items together, the total cost to Daimler of these undertakings and of some other requirements 
is around $1.5 billion. This relief will also serve to deter any others who may be tempted to violate our nation's pollution laws in the future. So from the DOJ side of this, the settlement is the culmination of a tremendous effort by the Environment and Natural Resources Division and its staff, and I do want to identify by name a, a few people especially, uh, Stefan Bachman, Lori Jonas, Steve O'Rourke, and Jerry McLaughlin. The Attorney General and I deeply appreciate their work on this case and all that the division does on behalf of the American people to enforce our environmental laws. I also want to thank Assistant Attorney General Jeff Clark and his counsel, Michael uh, Bushbacher, for their leadership, especially during the settlement negotiations. For the EPA side of things, I also want to thank EPA Assistant Administrator Bodine and the men and women of the EPA for their tremendous work and their outstanding partnership during this investigation. And of course, I again want to express my gratitude to Administrator Wheeler for his leadership and his dedication to working with us enforcing the nation's pollution laws. At this point, what I'm going to do is Assistant Attorney General Clark and Assistant Administrator Bodine will be available to provide additional details and background information and then help all of us answer any questions you may have about today's announcement. So thanks very much and we'll uh, turn it over uh, at this point for some questions. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm sorry. The qu sorry. questions are after some additional remarks from each of you. My apologies. So, Jeff, you're next. Yes. Well, thank you, Administrator Wheeler. Thank you, uh, Deputy Attorney General Rosen. It's an honor to be here. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Administrator Wheeler, for your excellent uh, uh, leadership on this and to uh, Jeff Rosen for his excellent leadership at the department. Um, and I also want to thank uh, my colleagues, whom the Deputy Attorney General has just thanked, and uh, also uh, Assistant Administrator uh, Susan uh, Bodine. Um, they've been great partners to us in the Environment and Natural Resources Division. As uh, some of you may know, a little more than a week ago, uh, President Trump and Attorney General William Barr asked me to take on new responsibilities at the department as the Acting Assistant Attorney General overseeing the Civil Division. I've handed off uh, most of the day-to-day -day operations of the Environment Division uh, to my enormously capable and talented Principal Deputy Jonathan Brightbill, who's here with us today. Thank you, John. And when I look back on uh, my leadership of, uh, of the D Environment Division over these past nearly two years, this settlement is one of the accomplishments that I'm most proud of. Indeed. The uh, other settlement in the Fiat Chrysler case from 2019 uh, that was mentioned uh, is something that goes back to the start of my tenure. So at some level, I'm, I have bookends. This one at, at one end and, and the Fiat Chrysler uh, cheating uh, case at the other end. Um, as the uh, DAG mentioned, uh, I and my counsel, Michael Bushbacher, were deeply involved in the settlement negotiations. As noted, this will be the largest per vehicle civil penalty ever paid uh, for emissions violations under the Clean Air Act. It's $3,482. That's larger than uh, Volkswagen, about $2,500, and larger than Fiat Chrysler, about $3,005 uh, per vehicle. And unlike VW and Fiat Chrysler, we've secured this penalty and much more without litigation. Our system of environmental laws is so successful because it sets a level playing field for competitors in the marketplace and sends that signal to the participants in the marketplace. This system creates strong incentives to innovate uh, and to innovate using cost-effective solutions for reducing pollution. And by harnessing the great powers of the free market, the United States has some of the cleanest air and water and land in the world. For those like Daimler who instead try to in innovate sophisticated ways to evade pollution requirements, to cheat, the department's message is clear. You're wasting your time and money and you will get caught. You'll also have to clean up the mess you've made. I want to thank the very dedicated uh, and very talented career attorneys in our enforcement section who worked so hard in this case for many years. Uh, they've been mentioned, but they can't be mentioned enough. Stefan Bachman, Lori Jonas, uh, Steve O'Rourke, Jerry McLaughlin, and I'd like to also, again, thank my counsel, uh, Michael Bushbacher. 
And of course, none of this uh, would not have come to pass without the work of our dedicated and extremely sharp and attentive colleagues at EPA. Thank you for all of your work. And with that, I'd like to hand things over to uh, EPA Assistant Administrator Susan Bodine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, I do want to reiterate that this is a landmark case, and a large number of people worked very hard to make it happen. I also want to add my thanks to the staff identified by the, uh, by the administrator, uh, as well as by the Assistant Attorney General and the, um, the Assistant, uh, <laughs> by Jeff Clark as well. Uh, I want to point out that Evan Belser, who is our Acting Director of our Air Enforcement Division and also uh, was integral in the negotiations, is here in the room with me, so thank you personally, Evan. Um, and then because I had the time, I want to name a few additional names that the administrator didn't have a chance to mention. Uh, from the Air Office, uh, Link Worley and Byron Bunker, as well as from our General Counsel's Office, David Orlin, Seth Bucksborn, and Mark Kataoka. Understand that EPA's enforcement and Air Offices work extremely closely together to ensure that automakers are held accountable under the law. We also work closely with uh, California's Air Resources Board. Making sure that automakers comply with vehicle emission standards under the Clean Air Act is paramount to ensuring that clean air and adequate pu public health protections are met and to ensure a level playing field so the companies that follow the law aren't competing against those who break it. The recent VW and Fiat Chrysler cases and now this action demonstrate how seriously we take these matters that result from violating laws that protect public health. EPA discovered Daimler's defeat devices through testing at our National Vehicle Emissions Laboratory in Ann Arbor and an information request that we then made to the company. This testing began after the Volkswagen case and specifically includes additional testing using driving cycles and conditions that reflect normal operation and use, and that is to uncover potential defeat devices. CARB also conducted additional testing, and then EPA and CARB exchanged information. CARB is a uh, co-plaintiff in the consent decree. Based, bear, put, to put it extremely simply, what happened here was Damler did not disclose their uh, auxiliary uh, emission control devices, which they are required to do under the law, which would allow EPA to examine them to determine if they're defeat devices. We found them and determined that, in fact, they are defeat devices because they caused the vehicles to produce lower emissions on the emission test than they did on real world driving. Then they sold those cars and imported them into the United States with these defeat devices, which of course were not disclosed on their certificate of conformities that the administrator mentioned. It violates Clean Air Act. It also violates laws enforced by the Customs and Border Protection. In fact, approximately 70% of the 250,000 vehicles were imported. Let me assure you that we have, we've changed our testing, we don't disclose all the testing we do, and that we are being flexible and unpredictable to, to catch people who cheat. As the administrator had said, if you cheat, we're going to catch you. So thank you. Let me turn it back over to the Deputy Attorney General. Okay. <clears throat> well, well, thank everybody for those remarks and uh, hopefully have clarified some of what this settlement's about. But undoubtedly, there are questions or, or uh, interest in additional background. So at this, this stage, uh, we now will entertain some questions and provide additional background uh, that we hope will also be helpful. So uh, we have a little different setup than we sometimes use because of the pandemic. So uh, I guess the questions are being uh, queued on the phone here. Okay. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speaker phone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. As a reminder, we ask that you please limit yourself to one question. If you have additional questions, you may re-enter the question queue. 
At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble the roster. The first question today comes from Mike Balsamo of the Associated Press. Please go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Deputy Attorney General, maybe you can just speak a little bit more about uh, the significance of an investigation like this and if there's a message from the Department of Justice uh, to other automakers who may be engaged in similar conduct. Obviously, we've seen uh, a number of cases alleging, you know, similar action here. So, so to some extent, I think all of us have done that to emphasize how important this uh, resolution is and what a, a land market represents. I think uh, with some forbearance here, maybe I'd ask Jeff Clark to elaborate further as, as uh, you did provide some historic perspective, Jeff, but why don't, why don't you augment that? Sure. Thank you. So what I would say to that question is that uh, we are vigilant. It is uh, very challenging as the uh, EPA administrator noted to find uh, this cheating because maybe most people don't understand that emissions control is not just an, a function these days in modern vehicles of uh, uh, mechanical devices. Um, so in the, in the older days, uh, those devices could be tampered with or turned off in some way. Uh, these days, in order to have a functioning modern vehicle, you really need a very complicated onboard computer system that runs it uh, and that, uh, you know, controls uh, all of the aspects of acceleration and burning fuel and the like. And so, uh, you know, one could think these cheating uh, devices, these cheating lines of code are hidden like needles in haystacks. But the lesson of these actions and the message that we want to send is that we will find it. We will find in innovative ways to test. Uh, we will keep at it. We will test the uh, vehicles. Uh, you know, using whatever conditions are necessary to see whether they're being faithful to the uh, to the whole testing system and to the integrity of it. And so it's not possible to hide uh, behind the millions of lines of code. You'll be found out. Thank you. And I think the one other thing I would underscore, as I said in my initial remarks, is when something winds up costing a manufacturer one and a half billion dollars or in that neighborhood, uh, we, we would anticipate that has some uh, general deterrent impacts on others as well. Another question? The next question comes from Tal Copen of the San Francisco Chronicle. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you all for having this. Uh, you know, your press release notes that this is also a violation of California law. It didn't get mentioned much during this press conference, and uh, neither did some of the tangles you guys have had with California over trying to, or your rule um, rolling back, uh, increasing emission standards. I'm just wondering how you square your pride in this settlement with your um, work and, and tangles with California on furthering the emission standards uh, for automakers. Sure. I'm going to call on the administrator for this one. Uh, first of all, um, Susan Bodine did talk about our work with CARB, and we partner with CARB on any number of issues on a regular basis. And just because we partner with them on some instances doesn't mean that we agree with them on everything. And as far as the, um, I, th I think you're referring to our safe rule replacing the Obama regulation. Um, you know, there is recent decision on, um, on on NHTSA's penalties that the that the automobile manufacturers have to pay, and they had tried to change that, and they couldn't. And I think that's a, a great example on why um, one of the reasons why the Obama regulations weren't working in 2017 only three automobile manufacturers were able to meet the standards, uh, the Obama standards at that point. Um, and they, the rest of them had to do it either by um, trade, um, cashing in credits or paying penalties. And the penalties are estimated to reach a billion dollars by 2025 if we had left the Obama regulations in place. So we replaced it with a much more cost-effective uh, measure that will reduce the price of a new car for Americans, it will also allow older cars to get off the road, and it will reduce CO2 emissions um, with 1.5 percent per year. So we didn't just roll back that regulation, and I, I know a lot of people in the press like to accuse us of rolling back. Almost every single instance when we have removed a regulation, we have replaced it 
with a more cost-effective regulation that gets almost the same emission um, emission controls as the one that we replaced, and that's the, and that is true for this safe rule. Um, so we um, are in disagreement with California over that, but we work with CARB and we work with the state of California on any number of issues. I was just in California myself two weeks ago on the water program where we've given the state um, over 100 million in WIFIA loans, um, actually closer to a billion in WIFIA loans. Um, we're working with them on cleaning up the border, the Tijuana border between California and Mexico. So we work with the state of California, we work with CARB on any number of issues, and just because we disagree with them occasionally does not mean that we don't have a good working relationship. Thank you. Okay, thank, thanks very much. Uh, at this point, the background briefing can take over. Sure. 